50% of his HP, he's just going to die. And they've got the burst tools to do that. Quap, Sky, and Earthshaker. And the other solution they need is against Viper. We could, uh, most likely, yeah, we're seeing the Gyrocopter actually pushing this. So looking really bad for Chad. There's a high chance he dies here, in my opinion. He's got a... It's, it's not looking good. He They're has no die. TP. They have a TP on Earthshaker, but he's not going to be coming, it looks like. Just a quick and easy kill yeah. on Chad. That is a first blood for Vega. Nightpatch going to be picking up that one. Of all people, the Gyrocraft are going to be grabbing it. Also nearby, it looks like MSS was able to snag up the Invis rune right in front of no one here. Looking for a hopeful setup in this mid lane. Might be able to get it with Fog tier two. There's not much Archon can even do about it. In fact, you look to Chad, who was in that bottom lane, and he's taking residence up next to Korok here in the top, top lane, trying to get their MSS own trade and pressure. But bottom. yeah, Radiant's bottom lane, they're going to be moving on. A quick take on MSS. Can they get Seema on the way out? They can't. He's going to be able to make it away with a good TP. It's a little bit of nuke damage, but now it's Vega up 2 0. Oh. A wonderful start for them. Ooh, might see a juke from Solo here in the jungle. Watch looking to get him. He does get him with the last raise. Nice snipe. Ooh. The call that oh, fog misses. though. Sidesteps goes right for the TP. Does he have a rocket? Nice. He does not. No missile available. Fogged. Nice cool sidestep, but look at this Ooh. at expense. Ush gets a quick pick as well. Seema the Slayer going to be going down, caught on that high ground where him and Solo have been flirting with this mid lane. Ush picks up another one on his Shadow Fiend. Really nicely done by Archon just now. I mean, they were definitely on the back foot there, but they played it safe. They didn't take any extra losses, and they collapsed on the supports, the heroes that were pressuring. And whenever those supports are dead, they now know that they can farm again and fogged again. Oh! Back the lane. They get a good catch on the Korok, though, and they bring him down. Beautiful setup right there. Seema rotates in, gets the Dragon Slave. Mag catches him wonderfully with the hook shot, and they get the follow-up damage. Now Vega up again. Magic immune, which means that Naga Sleep doesn't catch you, because then you pop your 10-second BKB, Naga Sleeps, and their whole team just hits you. I feel like Mecha is more important here, just because they have oop, nice gyro kill on the top lane. That was, with a, that was basically a solo kill there. Yep. That's what it look like, but I, I feel like it's got to be a mech here because they have a lot of heroes that are kind of squishy. Vegas kind of early game. There's an ulti from onto Ush. Yep, he just quick TPs and gets the hell out of there. He maybe could have turned that, but it, uh, Clockwork and position Invis, he could initiate on Ush here and he doesn't have BKB yet, so this is kind of scary. But they need to rotate everybody, they're getting close. Here's the battery assault, the cog as well. One TP coming in, it's gonna be Gyro. He's coming and look at the damage. Oh! They might get a kill first. They do. Clockwork goes down, Shadowfiend falls afterwards. Not the best. But better than worst. just dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he got a little bit of XP because of the help from Fog with that Mystic Flare. Means Mag is going to be the first to hit the deck. But they do ultimately get Ush down in the end. So, yeah, yeah. it could have been a lot worse, but it also could have been better. Beautiful setup for Mag. Nonetheless, is going to allow their team now to get rid of the Shadow Fiend and go for another Tier 1 tower. The third one now for them. Huge boost in the economy, especially from some of these supports who have been starved a bit. There's Korok on Q. He's going to be completing out. His this so is the too. second time top lane where they've been kind of itching forward. They might get it this time, though. They move in. Oh, yeah, that's a kill. They're committing. They got the big Mystic Flare ult. No one's going to be shot, going down. Oh, 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 oh. He's fakes it once, twice. Gets, one. Gets Chad. That's going to cancel his TP. That's going to make for a quick Witch Doctor kill. Everyone else going to hightail it out of there. Ends up being the one-for-one -one trade. A trade Archon are going to be happy with, ridding of that core Viper in exchange for just Chad. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Either going or not. Look at this Vega actually pulled out briefly. But they end up going back in. Ush is nearby. They see it. Can they saw him? They don't need to. Here comes the net. Uh, MSS puts a vision. Oh. Great hook shot. Oh, man. This is a big one from Mag. They're going to annihilate him immediately with the help of the Laguna. Ush, they'll stand strong, pops his BKB, and it looks like he's just going to be overwhelmed. He ends up going down. His Death Requiem does good damage on the No One. Korok looking to step in and clean up, but can't quite get done yet. Now he's in trouble, looking to run. Needs one more second for the blink. Makes it away. There is a homing missile in pursuit. Quickly bottles up. We'll be in a good range here, but this is still even more icing on the cake for Vega after already taking the Aegis. They now get to walk away with an additional two kills, one on MSS and, of course, the Shadow Fiend going down. So if you're caught on the wrong side, yep. you can Ooh. save somebody. Might see a quick pick here. Korok does quick work on Seema the Slayer, leads in, commits the Sonic Wave and gets the kill. And we'll look to try to get some extra damage here onto the Tier 1. But a rocket from Mag. Korok starts to play it a bit more hesitant and we'll pull back. Yeah, Korok and Usher are some of the best players for getting really amazing KDAs and pulling out some really nice kills, I feel. Like, it seems like their individual skills are so high. Fight mid. Okay, Blade Mail gonna be pop. It's the back end of that one. They get Chad, who's a bit out of position. Wonderful setup from your Viper Strike of no one. And they end up getting their own return kill on a support. 
from what happened top. Now they're going to take over mid. Vega, continue to press attack. on. We'll take a brief glimpse here at your net worth. It is for Vega, about 5K. You could look at about the same here for your XP. And Archon just kind of go back under retreat. Still feels like the tempo well in favor for Vega. They continue to be aggressive, and it pays off for them. Again, Kroko's in top. Quick Bit split. of damage on Solo. So he's able to step away this from the Shadow Strike slow. Korok now ensnared under the tower. Is he going to go for this? Who's rotating he's thinking in? about oh, it. It's Mag. He better get away from this hook shot. Looks like he's fine. It's creeps. Move creeps. Oh, he's got a haste. He's going for it. This is so hard. At his, yeah, Look at him. It's going oh. mid, but with Roche dying, it's just not safe. Korok has to get back. So tower will get denied now. At the very least, I, I don't think... Oh! The, oh, Mag with the catch again. On to MSS. Holds him in close. Is he able to break out from the cogs? He is. Force forward, though. MSS will be going down to the back end of that battery salt. Mag gets a good catch there. He wants more. Moving in for Fog. Here's Nine Pash charging in. And an oh, easy damn it. shot down. Oh, man. That was just hunting season. And it was Birdman on the menu. Easy catch there for Nine Pash. Two go down all day. It was a little unlucky there for Fog. To, uh, the first hit, Sanji Nyatra Proc, reduces his movement speed by 30%. And two dead heroes, two really important heroes, too, especially Earthshaker. Like, you have to watch out for Echo Slam. They don't care about that anymore. He's still good. He popped his DD. Here it is. Oh, man. Look at this tower. Going to get chunked down now. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, this is devastating. That backup security defense of your Earthshaker Echo not on hand and ready. They dish out the cask and the sonic wave, everything they've got to stop Vega from taking these racks. In game number one, Ush showing off his new Scott. He has to play it a bit reserved, has no buyback in case he does go down. Look at this disciplined play from Vega. They get the one racks they want, and they say, we got to go. Earthshaker's back up. We don't want to risk anything else. This is way too... The game, he's been a 0-4-3 and three Earthshaker. He got the blink, but Mag is just always one step ahead and knows where he is and sets him up. They see Mag now. Do they see Gyro? I don't think so. He drops a call down, and MSS getting a cut again on Q from the set of a Mag. Mag just dangling out there like a little worm in water. Easy bait setup for Nine Pash and makes for the easy Earthshaker takedown. It just does not get any easier for Archon. Man, this is... Ah, that's game one, but they can... But they better get there quick. This tier three getting chunked away. They know that this gyro has an Aegis and now a Satanic. That's almost like two full lives here, Purge. And they're going to go right for the racks. Two rack sets down. Oh, man, there's going to be very slim odds of coming back into this one. But Archon will need to do something eventually. The positioning, though, from Vega, making it very difficult. Oh, He'll go great. in. Ush sets up with a big Requiem. It's going to cost the first life, but he loses his own, and he has no buyback. It was, a, you know, an effort of a jump in coming out from Archon, but I think it just might be the beginning of the end here, Perch. Vega easily cleaned them up. Three go down, not coming back. It's only Korok and Chad left up and standing, and Vega already going for the last set of racks and Megas in game one. Yeah, I mean, the amount they were behind there, that was amazing. They, they blew up the gyrocopter before he's able to pop BKB. They killed the one hero that could counter-initiate with the Naga Siren, but they're just so far behind there. That was Aegis. They had a... DD, they've got BKBs, he's got a freaking satanic. It's just, their chances of losing this game at this point are 0%, and that is going to be the triple racks. Great wood shock, Dolt, he bounced quite a bit, but there's good game called. There's just no coming back from that disadvantage. They didn't get enough value out of their roaming heroes. Like, it, I think they stabilized well until the 10, 15 minute mark, but then it just kept being yeah. clockwork initiating, getting kills, and Quark did his best to poke top, but nothing happened anywhere else in the map other than Archon dying. It was a good start from them. They got it. it. It felt like in the very, very early laning stage, Mag got what they wanted, but then we saw Ush continue to just kind of... Uh, only downsides are Shadow Demon Ultimate is very good against melee heroes because it prevents them from moving very fast, so it yeah. can be bad. Viper might see initiation. C deck and MVP Phoenix. Again, they're going to be clashing potentially here at the bottom. Solo moving way in ahead, looking for a setup with that disruption. Look at MSS, cheeky positioning, cutting right on through. Gets disrupted immediately. Clockwork not going to get close enough, but the Fissure set up right here. They get a Thunder Strike. Solo going to be in a bit of trouble, but they don't have enough to follow up. And it looks like he could be going down. No, they're not going to do I mean, not going down. Looks like he will be getting away. Ush will not be pursuing whatsoever. They all decide to pull back. Uh, okay. They killed him because he was not, he was gonna, it was gonna take him like 20 seconds to walk back to base. Yeah. Instead, he's just instantly there. So, yeah, completely makes sense that they denied him. Nicely done. Just a little bit of efficiency. Oh, certainly. Ush will get the bot rune, and on the top rune, it's gonna be a Sand King grabbing that. He's got a stout shield, actually, so.
Uh, them too much of an easy time finding that side XP. You already see seen the Slayer here. Ooh, He's gonna get knocked up. though. Thunderstrike and a Fissure. Chad moving in from great behind. Great start or great Fog. dodge. He's able to sidestep the Splitter, looking to make it away. Now Korok looking to step in, gets the Earth Shock here, trying to get the catch on the solo. And look at that, Seema the Slayer gets denied. The neutral going to be finishing him off. Now they're on pursuit Ooh. for solo. They're getting split apart right here. Korok now decides he wants to go instead for the AM, who's working with the creeps, building up the efficient farm and XP. Both sides trade, but technically no blood has been shed. It may look like once more from solo. Oh, lightning strike onto Korok. Going to get slowed down a bit. He has no more mana. Disruption, they're going to lock him in place place here. Korok could go down. Caught with a split earth. Lightning Storm once more. Able to pop the wand. Lives briefly. Looking to make a run. Can't make it away. Going to be caught right there. Seam of the Slayer is going to draw the official first blood of this game. Fog could be caught out next. Drops a kinetic field. Barely making it away. Salves up. He steps oh. back. Oh no, he's gonna be brought down here. A few more right clicks will finish him. A blink committed. Nine patch grabs that one. Chad says, I gotta go. And it is gonna be technically two kills the way of Vega. It looks like Archon grabbed a couple of themselves though, making it four for two. Chaos just really breaks out the start. Versus Clocks 20, but I, I think MSS has gotta be happy with this matchup. Yeah. Now the top lane is going okay for him, but the bottom continues to be a bit of an awkward trade here. Fog, oh, getting blocked back from his own creep. Oh, has the turn in the this. corner and he goes down. Oh, unfortunate there with the creep timing and the pull through. Now they're looking to go for a return kill on the solo, but Korok gets locked down. Chad does kind of intervene and gets a nice fissure. Solo does end up going down. That was a great job by him, though. He had a DD. So it just goes for the disrupt combo. Nobody's even close, but that's great because it pressures them. They use their spells. They say, oh man, I'm going to get stunned by Lesh. Mid lane, Fissure on the next room. He's looking oh. for the quap. Yep, he sees Ush come right out. This Here, here it comes. is. He's charging up the Epi. Moves in. Beautiful setup with your Burrow Strike. That should be dead. And that is going to be a oh, dead bottle, the dot bottle, damage. Out of it. Shh, done. Pops it at the end. And there's your Blink debut purge. Beautifully executed, Mag rotates to the mid lane, and Ush just kind of shows himself. Makes it a bit too easy. So the epicenter's on the cooldown. So at the very least, ooh, almost trying to steal the Leshrac or Anti-Mage with the help from Quap. The, the Viper's HP is just too high. So push comes into the bot lane, Chad in trouble. He's going to TP, great juke spot. Will he get it? Oh, oh it doesn't. Oh, what? I can't believe it. Last Chad is going to die now for sure. Wow, well, that was a millisecond or something. I thought he was, I thought he made it. I was like, all right, there's no way you can turn and get the burrow strike in time. No, he got it. That was a photo freaking finish if I ever saw yeah. one. They get the kill. And we'll have it done. All right, Clock giving up on the gank top. He's getting spotted by the war though. And just as he does, he lands the hook shot. Shadow even disrupts. This should be a kill for sure. And uh, yes, oh. eventually. Doesn't go to Korok though. MSS has to finish it up there at the end. Might have been too long and wanted to make sure. Uh oh, meanwhile, Fog. Contact with the Viper Strike drops his own ult, the Static Storm Kinetic Field. He loses his own life. Will it be justified? It looks like not. No one should be able to etch himself out from trouble in a way. All the meanwhile, Korok going to get caught out on the other side. He goes down. Archon lose two. Now moving at the top. If they try to bait out this AM now, could be disastrous for Archon if they try to take that bait. He shows himself. Ush is nearby, hiding in the trees with Fog. But all the caught. meanwhile, they're catching out MSS near the secret shop, as you pointed out. And okay, Ooh. not happening. <laughs> he uh, tries cool. to hook shot out to his ally Chad there, but he does end up getting blown Ooh, up. They got quad, or they got anti mage on the top lane though. They got the trade they wanted, and they're Ush gonna get out. Blinks away. They both TP home. Split Earth not gonna connect, so it ends up being an MSS for AM trade. Totally Works out worth for it. Archon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That was really nicely played by them. They oh. spots him out, but he's getting getting jumped on by Ush. The TP's come as well. That's anti mage showing up to the team fight. He wants to be a cork. He's gonna be able to finish it. Look at that thing die. Man, that ult is ridiculous against Ush. TP in. Will he make it? Oh, they don't spot him. Oh, oh, he gets killed. He got killed right at the end. The mana void. I don't think even went off, but oh, it did. It actually Quark technically might get a kill went here. off. Can he get the one? He's gonna oh, lose his Aegis. Him. He will lose his Aegis. He can blink. They've got to land the perfect stun here. Here it comes. Oh, he doesn't get the blink because he went left. Oh, he had to turn happening. his hero. This is gonna be a second life drop for Korok here. And he ends up going down. Oof. That's brief that hope shattered. Don't know if that one was worth it there, but he gets he gets the kill. They use the Aegis. They took my anti mage. He's gonna blink. Oh, there's no creeps to farm though. Oh, there's and he definitely though. sees him now. He gotta get out of here before he loses all this mana. He's got a juke and blink. Oh, oh almost the ult. 
Oh, Quark fighting. Oh, they're turning. Actually, goes Seema. in unless it's good. He got it almost. Splinter does stop him. And now he gets disrupted. Seema the Slayer is A-OK. -okay. He's going to pull back. Fog, not so much. He goes down. Oh, great dunk by Chad. Catches a couple. That's going to be Lush dying. Looking for the Burrow Strike. That catches Quark. Quark's so low. He's got a wand, but that's about it. Spending money. Tries to get a BKB, but he's a bit short in gold. And now anti -mate chasing three dead heroes from Archon. Did anybody die? I know Leshrac died, but he's alive already. Is that the Bloodstone? That's the Bloodstone. Support Leshrac. Apparently you insta-respawn with no charges picked I up. I don't know. I mean, that it's was... down to six, and I saw him go down. He didn't buy back, so yeah. He did not yeah. buy back. <laughs> All right. Did he, he did die, right? He didn't suicide. That would have been a big Maybe suicide for him because no, they, they committed cool the Earthshaker. Yeah, they committed the Earth Dunder Award. They realized it immediately afterwards because they walked past the sentry. Look at them split. Now they have, like, gatekeepers here for the Roche pit. Oh, Roche is already gone. Anti-Mage grabs it. Ultimate on MSS. He's, He's getting gone. chased. We'll see. He's still got a hook. He could get out. Neutral's in the way, though. Here's the hook. He grabs the newts. Oh, not going to be happening. Quark's got to Korok, blink away here. Max still on chase. The gap closer. The end all oh, gap closers here. Nine all patch. right, they're going in. They want to go, but Korok has no more mana. Chad pretty low as well. They're just going to scurry back into their base and play it safe. And lost there is just an ageless viper working on bottom. They have their AM who does have the Aegis in the mid lane. Now he goes to the bottom to join them, and they still have yet to pull the trigger on anything. It looks like this tier three is going to be going down uncontested. Quark goes in. Damage BKB being used. Hookshot goes in as well. Oh, two man catch. Big Burrow set from Mag. My goodness. He's able to get the oh, quick dunk. And they get the grab right there. Chad trying to be a dire hope, a big dunk on the back end side, but it's only gonna get the Lesh. They've already now lost four Purge. Fog the only survivor, and it looks like the Rax is gonna be going down. Archon's dreams of TI5 glory could be shattered right before our eyes. And Mag now looking to ascend into the next round and be one step away from making it to Key Arena and into that prize pool. They've just got to win one more best of three after this one, if they take this win, and it looks very, very likely at this point. I mean, they had to blow all their cooldowns just to blow up the four position Leshrac. They can't deal with the Anti-Mage or the Viper unless it's a 3v1 situation, and that's two Raxes in a row. Now approaching three Raxes. Archon's going to have one last defense here, and if they don't five man wipe this, the game ends. How do you do that without an Echo Slam? I don't know, but... You got to go out with a bang, I assume, here. Vega, they got their eyes on the prize. They are looking to go right for the jugular. They're going to get the megs. And there's not going to be much to stop them. Archon, they're going to do it for the fans right now. They're going to probably look to go in and give it all or nothing. I imagine at this point, there's MSS leads in, gets the catch on the AM, pops his blade mail, and he gets popped himself, goes down immediately thereafter. Ush follows up with his own sonic wave. Oh! No one zone back onto Fog. Korok manhandles the AM. It is just for an Aegis after all. But it looks like Vega, the Immortal Beasts, still all stand. And it looks like they're going to force Archon back into their base and force Dyer's them to accept the reality that this attack. is over. Mag even buying a Dagon out at this point. Looks like Archon, their TI5 days are going to be numbered here. Yeah, they're, they're, their chances of defending Mega Creeps are pretty much non-existent. They don't have much AoE. It's a Disruptor support, an Earthshaker support. and. They are just, yeah, that's it. They're talking about what happened. Well played comes out from Archon, and indeed it was. Vega looked very strong in this two-game series. Archon, got to give the boys some respect. They came in. They w took it to a three-game stretch against MVP Phoenix in a very tight game two. Game three even started for Archon. And then in this series, it was pretty convincing it was Vega. We could chalk it up to multiple reasons. Purge, maybe Archon being a bit more nervous and more hesitant 